So again, guys, today we have more people filing in, but we're going to talk about how you've been lied to, and I guess that's kind of uh, an in-your-face, you know, kind of clickbaity type thing. But you know, in a it's lot of cases, I, I feel like it, it is, it is, and I feel like in a lot of cases, some things get so something will hold true a few years ago, and it seems like a quote-unquote like I don't want to call it like white hat, but a best practice, right? And instead of ever questioning that or testing it. It's just like it becomes it becomes the law, right? It kind of becomes like one of the laws of SEO, and you know, I, I'm I just again some of this stuff's going to be pretty controversial <laughs> that we're going to talk about today, and I'm I'm sure there could even be some backlash from people saying no, that's just not right. And listen, you know, just because we're talking about it here doesn't necessarily make it law. We're just sharing the things that we we see, right? Like you know. We don't obviously track 60 to 80 trillion websites that are in the public Google index, but we track our websites, our clients, our lead gen stuff, and we're just telling you definitively what we've found. Okay? Does is it always going to ring true? Absolutely not. But you know, I think this stuff's fun, and it just goes along with the entire LCT SEO recon, right? What really is work is working? You know, what what we're really seeing? Uh, a deep dive into our data. So. Man, we have some really cool stuff to talk about. What do you guys want to start with? You guys want to start with citations, indexing, de-indexing, PBNs? Where do you guys want to start? Let's start with citations, Mark. I think I think you have some really cool data on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, let's just let's jump right into it. So, citations. <laughs> um, I, I'd say probably one of the biggest concerns with local marketers, right, and and how it's going to affect their maps rankings and everything else is NAP consistency, okay? And that's true. Yeah, drop me a one if, if you believe NAP consistency is just the key, right? Like if your NAP isn't consistent, you're just, you're not going to rank in maps. It's going to be a, a, a terrible, terrible venture down just a rocky road. And not the good rocky road like the ice cream that I'd love to have on my diet. <laughs> But <laughs> just just terrible rankings and stuff, right? So we have some ones, Carl, Carl Hirsch. Yes, that's that's um that's the direction I'm going to. So I'm actually going to do a case study. Um, I might may do it with Jacob or Mike if they want involved. But I, I'm actually going to self-destruct an NAP on a specific site. I'm going to send so many variations. Google's going to hate me. They're going to be so confused. And I'm going to I'm going to share the 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 results with you on that. Because I'm I'm pulling the uh, the bluff card on NAP consistency. It's it's bullshit. I'm not with it anymore. I have so much data, so many sites that I don't have access to citations. Huge amounts of citations, address changes that clients just they they never you know they have these citations that were built and it's it's like I've never been able to change them and I just don't see it affecting my rankings right. So. Yeah. I, I think that's I think that's a big piece of like we're, we're told now and, and here's the thing and I'm I'm not going to sit and and bash any of these larger like white hat blogs right it's just that's not that's not my style they have a model that works but um here here's my thing is like a lot of the a lot of the the theory around NAP consistency perpetuates from platforms that offer an NAP cleanup service right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I, I That's do just believe coincidence. I'm sure. Coincidental, <laughs> absolutely. There's no foul play. There's no marketing marketing savviness there at all. Um, you know, it's the same thing. It being 100% transparent, it's the same reason I try to showcase the, the 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 results I have with with my team behind Web20. Right? It's smart marketing. You know, but there comes a point when, you know, there could there's 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 two different outcomes either they're not testing okay and that's that's fair it, it becomes SEO law and we just figure we have to have consistent NAP across the board or we're just gonna suck in local right or they just <laughs> they have the data and they're like wow this doesn't really make that much of a difference but you know that could end up costing them quite a bit of money especially with the acquisitions if you guys really dig into some of like which companies acquired whom to you know provide better citation cleanup services or to have like an API relation with those citations like there's a lot of money invested 
and the idea that you need NAP consistency. Let's look at Yext business model, for instance. Their entire business model revolves around you needing to have NAP consistency and, and, and have like a, a managed solution there, right? That's their entire business. If if everyone says, hey, you know, the data is, you know, we're not really seeing a huge difference one way or another, their business model isn't <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore, right? So yeah. You know, I, I know Jacob. I think I think you said you had some you had some some fi some similar findings. Yeah. Oh, just over and over again. Like, and and by no means are we saying that citations aren't important. Like, citations are still like important ranking factors. And if all of your citations are inaccurate, they're probably not counting for you. <laughs> but but I'm really not seeing anything to back up that they're counting against you. Like, I'd I'd put my effort into going out and building <laughs> a bunch of accurate citations over. I mean, if you have logins to them, like, go ahead and change them. Like, sure, uh, sure. But I've done, well, I mean, this is even going back two years ago now. I, uh, when I was ranking for my city SEO, I, I blasted out a press release with one of my clients' phone numbers in it for my site. Uh, it was like, it was like my name, my address, their phone number, <laughs> and had had zero effect. I've seen. Um, I mean, look at. Do you guys have, is Enterprise a big uh, a big company down there? Um, like a uh, car rental company. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so check out Enterprise. They're um, at least up here, and I assume they do the same down there. They don't have unique phone numbers for each of their locations. Like their their NAP all goes to a one eight hundred number. <laughs> like right. so, it's basically just massive NAP inconsistency. Like if if you were looking at it from a traditional perspective there. Um, they seem to rank fine. <laughs> yeah, um, that's really cool that you bring that specific company up as well. Because just like Carl um, contributed to the chat, he said authority over exact NAP, and I completely agree. And when you say authority, it doesn't have to be enterprise authority. From my findings, it's there's a ton of other signals, right? There's a ton of other signals that are just going to have so much more impact than. Yeah. Fixing that NAP, and I, I do agree with you. If you have the logins, fix it. Or a lot of times, clients are like, "Wow, we need this fixed, right?" Or it looks good to get it fixed. And in that case, you know, there's there's just um, you, you know, do, doing a, a high end service is it just it's not um, it to me it's not a good ROI. Or if you do it in house, an ROE, it's not a good return on your energy, in my opinion. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, unless it's a professionalism aspect, like you said, like yeah, if it's, sure. you know, yeah. if I have a client paying me five grand a month and they want to see this report that I've gone in and changed, you know, 200 of their citations, like <laughs> I'll do it. Right. Exactly. All, all yeah. I can really say is honestly for clients, I use a good service, but any other site I've ever done, I've pretty much used Fiverr for citations like all the time. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. I, I have a client that moved addresses, and I just didn't bother updating any of their citations because they were. It was like my the first client I ever took on. They paid me like three hundred bucks a month, and uh, I figured if their rankings dropped, I'd fix it. And it's been like that for like a year now. Like they they have zero citations with their correct address on it, you, except you should, just you Google my business. That. Yeah, you showed me that they're rocking it with. Yeah. 100% rock <laughs> so. Yeah, they're like number one organic, number one maps. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it kind of it kind of says like so so we can let let's let's meet in the middle with some people who are just like no, it has to be important, right? Let's meet in yeah. the middle and say like it, it's just not as impactful as we're led to believe, right? It, it's yeah. well, and I mean, that's that's a factual. This this client that I'm talking about too, like they don't have authority. Like this is a client that I ranked with PBNs. Like they have, you know, maybe ten right. or fifteen powerful PBNs and like some social signals. Like it's not it's not enterprise we're talking about here. So. Right. So at the same time, um, so, okay, cool. Let's do a quick question, quick. Jeremy says, so what does work well? I'm dropping map rankings right now, and I use PBNs mainly. So listen, what I would do, i jump back into the very first LCT SEO recon we did. We talked a bunch about maps, especially after the updates and the fluctuations. After that, uh, check the LCT blog, man. We have a huge amount of, of maps, and admittedly, that is like a content piece that, you know, we, we try to get you to download a GMB checklist, and of course, we try to sell you our GMB training and LPP. Just be transparent, you know, <laughs> like it's, but it's really good content. I mean, if you go through and, you know, I think the, I think the content piece itself is about 3,000 words for me and a bunch of videos from Brian. 
I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great resource. I'm not saying, uh, obviously, I'm biased as well, <laughs> but at least I admit this stuff. I'm, I'm not selling you guys a citation cleanup service and telling you how important NAP consistency is, right? So, um, it's, um, I'll drop that link, Jeremy. I'll, I'll drop that in the, in the Facebook thread afterwards. Um, just a, a few a few resources to stuff like that, but NAP consistent consistency. Like, if I'm a business owner, one of the you know I'm concerned that people are going to find these listings and go to the wrong address, right? But from a ranking perspective, pff, get out of here. And I want it. There's so, there's cheaper solutions. Like, <laughs> here comes the ultimate self plug. Web twenty. We're we're actually getting ready to offer one of those next week. It's going to be like sixteen bucks a month, and it's going to do everything. Reporting. There's it's not just a citation cleanup, right? I mean, it's it's like a ton of services in one, and it's like these people that are charging thirty bucks and seventy bucks and these big yearly things. It's just not necessary, or you know, ten bucks per citation to get cleaned up. I mean, a lot of the big white hat blogs have that stuff too, and it's just not necessary. Like, I wouldn't invest that type of money unless it actually had a huge impact on your SEO and your rankings. Otherwise, it seems more of a professional aspect or a line item on a proposal, like Jacob said. If they're paying me five grand a month and it's bothering them. You know, I'll pay 16 bucks and get it fixed, and it becomes a line item. You know, I can show them all of this improvement, you know, with their with their citations, right? But other than that, get it out of here. NAP consistency not nearly as important as it's as it's made out to be. You have been lied to. Was that too much? Was that too much with the whole like you've been lied to? I'm gonna end everyone with like get, get it out of here. You've been lied to. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Mark, when you do that, uh, when you uh, nuke your nuke your NAP citations to for that case study. Um, it would be interesting to to see if it makes a difference if it's a service based business or a, or a business that shows their address because it's it's just it's always bothered me that citations are even a ranking factor for service based businesses. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to mess with that. You know what? Why don't why don't we why don't we work together on that and do like a we could do a split a variable right so yeah. one will do the the service or maybe we could do two of each that way we can see if it's a repeatable thing right yeah, that we'll that have a statistically thing. significant sample size right if yeah exactly like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you guys know how much data we're doing we're gonna do two sites <laughs> and again guys like I said we don't own we don't have data on sixty to eighty trillion sites in the end though. So. Has to be on a bit smaller level, you know. But at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm confident we're not going to see a difference. So, you know, we'll definitely do some testing with it and show you guys, um, show you guys the results. And hey, maybe maybe they'll tank, right? I am going to get aggressive with it. Maybe they'll tank, but on a smaller level, I, I'd say the, I'd say the best bang for your buck is like you guys said, Mike and Jacob, build, build new citations, invest in new citations. Don't waste your time or money on, on NAP cleanup. So, yeah. that's a bit ballsy, but a very good point. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> uh, what would you do if a prospect wants you to rank a wealthy affiliate WordPress site? There's no local physical address or customer support phone number. Simply content and affiliate links. Ugh. Um. <laughs> well, that w that was out of left field. Well, obviously you're not going to build <laughs> citations. That's for that's for sure, Wes. Um. Uh, again, just just to I don't, I don't want to get too far off base here today. Um, you know, I every I mean, what, what's the difference between that and any other site? If you have too many affiliate links, that can affect the quality score. But that's something I don't have a ton of data on, so I can't say. Listen, if you're over this many links, you're going to have lackluster results, right? I'd try ranking it like any other site: um, links, links, content, and links. I'm pretty sure that the too many affiliate links thing is a uh, is also as a percentage of overall content on the page. Yeah. So. Right, right. That would make a lot of sense. I mean, if you sit and have a definitive article that's you know five or ten thousand words, which we talked about, that not always being great either. You know, and yeah. there's you know twenty links in there. Obviously, it's going to have a a much a much different impact on the quality score than if there's twenty links within five hundred words or you know, right. a thousand words. So, absolutely. But you know that that's something I don't have a ton of definitive data on. But just you know, use your head. There's a ton of quality guidelines. You know, try to you know try to just add content. That's that's the formula for everything, guys. Links, links, content, links. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? that? Was Sorry, that, that was me. 
The party just started. <laughs> that's the, that, that? That, 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 sir, is the Mythbusters theme song. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> like, you've been lied to. Um, <laughs> all right, so we talked about NAP consistently. Let's let's get deeper down the rabbit hole. Let's piss some people off, okay? Where, where do you, where you guys want to go with this next? Because because these next topics are gonna just go against every grain of SEO knowledge ever. Like I I'm not I won't be surprised if there's actual backlash from this. Like no, you're wrong. Like I'm just waiting for it. So let's do it, guys. What's next? <laughs> You want to go, Jacob? I, I like the PBN stuff for sure. I know you said you had some stuff on that. Yeah, sure. Um, I I started this I, again like a year and a half ago, probably. I just it, it, so most people when they're PBN indexed, they take them down. And I've actually like I've traded links with people before where like I've had a PBN get de-indexed, and P, and the person I trade linked with links with is like, dude, your PBN's de-indexed. Can you please take my link? off, because um, I don't want to link to my site on a de-indexed PBN, um, which I think is pretty conventional. Like like most sure. people would, would not want links on de-indexed right. sites. Um, I have, I leave, I leave all my PBNs up, I leave all the links up, I, you know, if it gets de-indexed, I, I usually, like, I don't even try to bring it back. I won't send, you know, I know some people send social signals to it or like try to make it look legit. I usually just, like I keep everything in a Google sheet. I just make that line red and I just don't touch it. And about every three to six months, I check all of my de-indexed PBNs and usually about three quarters of them have been re-indexed. And then I make the lines not red and I continue putting links on them. Um, so <laughs> I would say, uh, I've also never seen a, a negative impact to a site from from PBNs getting de-indexed that it was on. Uh, like I, I could see it happening if there was like mass de-indexing. Maybe I've never experienced that. Like if every single PBN right. that linked to where, a site got de-indexed, where it's not really like a footprint issue. It's actually like you lost a bunch of link juice issue. Right. I could see that, but I, but I'm honestly not even sure. Like I don't believe that you're not even getting link juice because I mean Michael <laughs> you've been saying like you see Google bots crawling your your de indexed PBNs <laughs> all the time right yeah, yeah. Um, and this has come up a ton in in not even just with PBNs but people talking about whether whether links need to be indexed to pass juice um, oh yeah and they, now we're getting to the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> They, I mean, they 100% definitively do not need to be indexed for Google to know about them. I can, I can say that without a shadow of a doubt. That Google knows your links are there. Well, because the data is there. Like you said, you yeah. can see that it's being crawled. So yeah. I, I find that interesting because we know, there's, we know that Google has two indexes. Okay, they have a public index that we see when we search things in, in the SERPs. Okay, um, they also have a cache. Where sites get cached, sites get crawled. It's based on it's it's based on links, right? They're they're following from link to link to link, and it all gets put in a larger cache, right? So right along the lines of of the whole of, of the whole enchilada, right? So there's been a, a, a surge of these Huffington Post uh, accounts being made, right? And what a lot of people don't tell you is initially when you first post. Um, and this is this is just the norm. So if you're buying like cheaper HuffPo links or HuffPo accounts from people, please know that when you make a post, it's no indexed, it's no followed. Like there's a no index tag. Okay. Uh -huh. so, this is fantastic. So what <laughs> I got. what I did, this is actually a site Jake and I work together on. Okay. So this is like this isn't some like you know like we both see that the data is in on this, right? So we created a Huffington Post. Uh, not, not only that, but this is like a, a very competitive site that's that's been very difficult to move for a lot of its sure. keywords. Sure, it, it's it's for <laughs> it's it's a na it's national, you know, national ranking. Yeah. Um, a lot of these keywords are, you know, we're, we're seeing sticking top of page one, mid page two, right? Um, search term on the the one we moved was I, I want to say like twenty thousand a month or so, twenty. Some thousand, eighteen thousand, somewhere yeah, around something there. Something like that. Competitive, yeah. right? There's a lot of money in it. So, <laughs> we we created this Huffington Post um, article, and we used the exact match keyword, right? 
like exact match and it's no indexed. So what I did is I grabbed it and threw it in a Google crawl because it's like, man, I, I just, I, I understand the two index theory. There's a lot of talk about link juice being passed even if it's not in the public index, you know, which I, I understand goes against the grain of everything we, we love and know about SEO. But I was like, I want Google to crawl it and I want Google to follow that link. Okay, I don't care if it's a no index. I don't care if it doesn't show up in their public index, the public SERPs, but I do want Googlebot crawling that because if you understand the core competency of Googlebot, it's to crawl and try to understand pages and then following links to other pages, right? We, we know that. So, and that's all we did, right? That, that was a very and, controlled thing. And this is like, like, like there was nothing else really happening to that page. It was sort of, it's sort of a secondary keyword. It was already, yeah. it was ranking number five, so we kind of weren't really, like, it, it's, it wasn't the main focus of the campaign and there was nothing else going on at this point, right? Right, right. So we did it. We crawled it, right? Force crawled it through Google. And not just the ranking for that specific keyword, but other variations of it, right? So it's like the plural form of it, um, the, like the reverse, like just ex ex of the very specific variations, very close variations. Uh, yeah. We saw an uptick across the board. No index, yes. no follow, force crawl, of, Google. Of like like number five to number two, or to number five to number three, sorry, up, up two spots within the top five on page one. Like, <laughs> right, for a very competitive term. That's I mean, a, that's, that's a substantial movement. Absolutely. And it's, um, you know, it, go, it goes to show that, you know, you, you guys are still seeing your, the index PBNs being crawled. You know, we're seeing, you know, very controlled situations of rank increase <laughs> using no index, like no index, it's not that it got de-indexed, it, like it's it's written into the code, like it, HuffPo de has a no index tag on all new contributor posts and that's the, <laughs> that's the result we had with that, so you know the entire idea of you know just the entire idea of, of how we think we should handle the indexed PBNs of how we should be handling um, j just links in general, you know, just because it's not in a public index does not mean Google isn't crawling it. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. Definitely. Um, so that's that's definitely some fun stuff. Um, I was I was like giggly about that just because it's, <laughs> it was such a that that's one of the first real controlled tests. I've ever done with that. I don't know about you, Jacob, but that was one of the first control tests I've done in that type of an environment. Um, you know, is there, are, are there secondary things influencing that? I mean, it could be, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it was so, just... Well, yeah, one, one thing that you can take away, too, uh, more on the PBN side, is... It, you know, it was always very important to me not, especially when buying scraped domains, um, not just to do a spam check, but also to do an archive check and make sure that the domain had never previously been used as a PBN. Um, and it was, you know, it makes sense because if it was used as a PBN and it got dropped, the only reason someone would drop a PBN is if it either got de-indexed or it wasn't good. So why would I want to re-register something that wasn't good? Uh, but I'm, but I'm kind of letting go of that rule a bit now. Now that I'm seeing my own de-indexed PBNs re-indexing, you know, three to six months later. And, and then providing good juice, um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of good domains sitting out there that were previously used as PBNs dropped and that will re-index. So, not all of them. Some will not. You know, don't spend don't spend 200 bucks building out a site that was previously a PBN, but slap something up and if it indexes, great. The the moral of the story is don't not try something just because everyone is saying it doesn't work really is, is what it's coming down to because I've seen a lot of crazy stuff going on with the PBNs especially some of those more spammier PBNs I just registered a couple you know about a week ago and uh, I mean they, they used to be like exact match domains that were very obviously blog comment links and uh, just did not look that great but they're sending plenty of juice to my sites I saw great increases with both links but uh, again, something that it's not necessarily going to work every single time. I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's. I, I don't know if I don't know if I'm going too deep right now. <laughs> but you just you just stop me, Mark. If I'm 
I'm going too far. But <laughs> but like we've experienced. <laughs> yeah, I I hear you. That's what she said, right? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. You've been on. I just hear I just hear Mark chuckling. I'm like, all right. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, we I've, we've noticed on a couple occasions. I've talked to Mark about this. Uh, is sites that'll be penalized for a specific term. Um, where like I've I've gotten sites penalized for their brand term before. Uh, where their brand term, you know, where it's an affiliate site, I've made up a brand term that sounds like it could be an exact match. Um, I've had home pages that where I restored an expired domain uh, and put sort of spammy affiliate content on it, and Google marked my home page as uh, as hacked. Um, meanwhile, my inner pages are all ranking <laughs> fantastically. I, I love and, that. And I really wouldn't be surprised if some of these PVNs, like you pick up something that's like, I don't know what's a what's a spammy niche like I don't know Air Jordans let's say sure uh, and it's just like obviously holding a penguin penalty for Air Jordans because it's got like fifty percent exact match or whatever uh, I you know I don't believe that that means that the PBN doesn't still have good link juice like it's not going to rank for Air Jordans <laughs> good luck with right. that <laughs> right. uh, but. But it still has, you know, I, like I'm finding that the penalties and hack warnings and stuff are just very specific to a to a keyword, and that's, and don't necessarily kill the page. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's very interesting. So, kind of building on that, and maybe I, I like where we're going, right? That maybe this this probably could have been a, a complete separate webby, but since we're here, let's party. Um, so and and. I don't want to get too deep into the whole the whole concept of negative SEO, right? But we've we've tested that a decent bit on some of our properties just to see how they re, how they respond to certain things. Jacob, I know you've done some wild stuff. This could this could be its own thing, right? I don't want to get too deep into the negative SEO side of things, but what we've noticed is really interesting is when we test it. Okay, and we're testing it again, so we might have uh, uh, another site ranking for that specific keyword and city, right? So we're testing like a sustainable, um, a sustainable SEO strategy against negative SEO, right? It should be apples and oranges. There shouldn't even be a contest there, right? So what we've been finding is we start assaulting this site, and this is local niches, everything, and what I think is in place, and this is the only way I know how to explain it maybe someone else can explain it a bit better that you know actually does negative SEO or tests it a lot more but Google obviously is going to do its best to pick up on negative SEO right it's why you can see it. if you go to any form and people are like yeah I, I hit a competitor which I, I think is completely unethical but it's it's your life right I'm not gonna tell you how to live it um, like I don't I don't recommend that being the way you win in the SERPs is trying to tank your competitors, especially if you don't know how to do it. Because the whole just onslaught of, of links and so we hit this site with like payday loan stuff, terrible things. Like we had like a how to make meth anchor text. Like I wanted I wanted Google to remove this site from index. Okay. I wanted it to be as adult material, drug related material terrible spammy I mean dude we hit it with everything and I'm not sure if it's the negative SEO itself or the fact that we hit it with so many different topical anchor texts that Google was like no bullshit you're not that's not happening this site there's no way this site goes that hard that it just is, has all of these things in one place it's like a depot for just tickets, right like it's just a depot for terrible people this site it's like a, it's like a directory for everything like just bad in the world um Oh wow! That's um, great. no, I'm not showing anything besides the presentation slide. This is this is pure audio bliss today, Igor. Um, <laughs> no, no but um, you know, so what we what we saw. So I'm not sure the exact thing that Google said no and filtered, but the site dominated the SERPs and it still ranks number one to this day. And it's in it's actually in a it's 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 not a punk niche. Like it's a pretty decent niche that's honestly very tough on spam as well. Like spam doesn't 
doesn't ride well in this niche. And we're crushing it for the entire city number one. Nothing's been touching it. Like, like our, our actual real site, we can't get to rank above it anymore. So uh, my thing is it hits a filter, just like Jacob said, where it's like a specific thing they're like penalizing it for, right? So I bet this site would never rank for payday loans or meth labs or you know anything else we, we, we hit this site with. But at the same time, I think Google kind of cleared the board on the anchor text or the topic or you know whatever there they cleared the anchor text but the links are still passing juice to it there's no other way to explain the number the, the number one ranking mm -hmm. the page one number one ranking it's like they they completely disregarded it's like a filter in place that said this is negative SEO we're disregarding the anchor text we're disregarding whatever but for some somehow some way those links are still pushing juice to keep it pinned at number one. So the, yeah. the entire – let's roll with it. You've been lied to. Like that's <laughs> wait, like that wait, wait. Mess, you rock that site? Yeah, dude, let's do it. Uh. <laughs> You've been lied to. But right there, guys, it's another great example of, of, of just – you know, and typically, if someone says, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm hitting a site with with just the spam," it was all spam too. Like it was terrible amounts of automated spam. You know, typically, but, someone but Mark, says, that, did you, "Oh shit, I'm did thanking, you, right? Did you not send dot onion links to the site? Um, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I killed the flow there. <laughs> that's, that's fun. I actually had to think for a second. I'm like, how dirty did I get? Like, maybe I could have just destroyed this a lot more. <laughs> okay. So, Brian says, so what you're saying is I can send spammy GSA links from a 5 or gig to money site and it might rank. Okay. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> here's the thing with that. I feel like... I feel like the – gosh, man, I really don't want to get into a negative SEO thing. I feel no. like – I feel like if you're sending spam to your site trying to optimize for your money keywords, you're going to have very diminishing results. What I think <laughs> happened is Google recognized it algorithmically as a negative SEO attack. Like they've been saying for years, they're trying to clean that up. Um the best practices for negative SEO have nothing to do with spam. It, from my limited testing, just playing around to see what tank sites and what doesn't. I'm not going to get into negative SEO and what I found to work for tanking sites. Like I just don't feel like that's conducive with LCT. <laughs> like, like I just don't feel like that's what I should really do in this group, right? Uh, I don't like I don't agree with the concept of it, but at the end of the day, we all like to test things. Like I know Jacob was trying to penalize sites, like. You know, if, if I, was, I, was, know, I was trying to penalize my own sites. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, to clarify. <laughs> just, to, just to clarify. The, the so. closest to negative SEO that I've ever gotten is like accidentally taking a site on page two by by testing 301s <laughs> against it. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that happens. But <laughs> what, what are you going to do? You have to test somewhere. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, Page two for testing. Yeah, I, no, I feel you on that, Edward. I'm not a fan of that either, man. I've I've had I've had a decent bit of that happen to my clients, and you know it sucks. But you know, ha having said that, I feel like if just a a typical Joe Schmo tries to penalize your site, like a lot of people think would work, it's it's going to have diminishing results, right? So I don't think it's the it's not a spam thing that worked to help it rank. It's uh, well, Google algorithmically said no, something's wrong here, and it worked in my benefit. If that makes sense. One thing I'm seeing too is, um, especially we're talking about PBNs being the index coming back and just the spam. But I've seen a lot of sites that were had negative attacks that were a couple of some of my Legion sites that actually pushed my rankings up quite a bit. And in the past, like week or so, I've seen plenty of sites that I, re you know, way back in the day did SEO on that. Uh, some of them were even de-indexed just from using things like SE Nuke and and whatnot, and they've popped back. And a lot of them are ranking right now. I have a client that just called me, an old old client called me a few days ago, telling me he's he's getting calls, wondering what's going on, 
and uh, he's like on the first page. He was like number five for his main target keyword, just out of out of nowhere. <laughs> And I, I had run like SE Nuke on that thing, and and just shot some like exact match PBNs, like twenty of them or something, and and they're all de-indexed now, and it's just a lot of those crappy links are left. But it's you know it's something I've seen a lot recently. So even trying to negative SEO someone, you could actually help them in in yeah. this algorithm. It seems like <laughs> Ab absolutely. And 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 like I said, maybe we should just chat about negative SEO sometime. I don't want to get really too deep into it today, but. You know, I, I just my things like if yeah, I'm just not gonna say too much more about it. <laughs> uh, Danny said, "Kick out an invoice to that guy." Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a good keyword too. <laughs> sorry, sorry, your results haven't been great over the last four years, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's like you win some, you lose some, pal. You win some, you lose some. Invoicing is in session. So. <laughs> You guys have anything else? You want to take a few questions, or uh, yeah, we can take questions. Is there, is there, is there one more, uh, one more myth we want to bust? Or uh... I, I, the biggest thing I want to talk about was this, the the NAP consistency and then the indexing stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you guys have something else, I mean, we can. We can, I mean, it goes on forever, though. We can talk about metrics, anchor text. Oh God! Anchor text ratios is the the you know huge. A lot of these sites with like twenty percent, thirty percent, fifty percent of their keyword or, or plus, just killing it right now. <laughs> we we yeah. should do a part two of you've been lied. Yeah, because <laughs> I I could definitely. definitely. There's actually, if you guys are seeing cool stuff on metrics, I just posted a case study in the local client takeover blog about a site we have ranking. Um, <laughs> I posted a screenshot of the metrics uh, from Majestic. <laughs> it, dude, it's sad. Like it's not, even, <laughs> it's not even topically relevant. Like it says it's about, about technology and it's a service-based business. And it's, like, it's got like a two. Too trustful, I think it had. Ooh, yeah, and then like, what is it like a 17 citation? <laughs> I mean, that's like people would pass on that domain, right? Like, if I tried selling that domain right now, people, oh, yeah. would, hell no. And then, like, hey, guess what? It's it's like generating leads. So, well, there's people that they won't buy domains unless there's like a one-to-one -one ratio for the CF and TF. Yeah, that never made sense to me. I don't know. Either. Yeah. That, you know, you know when it made, sense. it made sense for like the first three people that ever scraped domains, where there were just tons of great domains out there. Yeah. Filter yeah, automatically based on metrics, but, but like, yeah, my best domains that I find from scraped have have trust flow under ten, consistently. Yeah. Um, I actually, I I like domain authority. It's it's. It's one of my favorite metrics right now. Yeah. Because on a on a site that hasn't been SEO'd, um, it's pretty good. So so if it's got like a DA of twenty five and it's never been SEO'd, I'm I'm looking deeper into that. You know, the the real problem everyone has with DA is how easily manipulated it is. But if nobody's manipulated it, <laughs> it's a pretty good metric. Yeah, yeah I definitely. My biggest thing is the referring domains, the quantity and quality. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel like DA and Trustflow are spot on with actual authority sites. Like I, I feel like if you have like uh, like auction domains, for instance, a lot of like good auction domains will showcase good metrics. So I feel like once it reaches a certain level of authority. It's going to be decent. I, that level's just—it's not an—it's not an SEO expired domain level. It's, you know, we're talking. You have 500 referring domains. You have, you know, 1,200 referring domains, and you know, a thousand to three thousand links. And it's, you know, once you get to there, those metrics start to make more sense. It's like, okay, I can see this, right? But if I have something that's a, you know, a hundred referring domains and a trust flow of, I don't, I don't care what the rest of the metrics are, you know. Well, I mean, like Majestic's huge, huge downfall, in my opinion, like where where they go the most wrong is if you you know you go into your backlinks, right? You sort it's sorted by the ones with the highest page trust flow. So you look at like the top ten links or whatever. Like everyone has their own process, right? And then you keep going down, and there will be links that have you know it shows like zero trust flow, so they're like way down low. 
and it'll be on like an authority site, like some you know like do, domain mm-hmm. authority sixty nine seventy, like like really like natural contextual link in like a real article, not SEO'd, um, and it's on a page with with a PA of one, right? And it and like it's got there's no links to that page. And, and those links are so powerful, especially if you're willing to go in and send some tier two links to them. Like that's that's where the metrics miss is those, you know, links on high authority sites that are on that where there's low page authority, in my opinion, anyway, which is correct. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I would say you're correct too, Jacob. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. Should we, yeah, should we take some questions? Sure. Wait, hold on. Uh, oh, one, one, one more of these to finish off. Oh. All right. Hit it, Mark. You've been lied to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Dude, I, I imagine, like, some people will be entertained. By us, we did a we did a, an interview with um, uh, Daryl Rosser uh, yesterday. So, yeah, yeah, it was yesterday morning. Um, he posted about it in, in a Lion Zeal, and um, dude, that was I apologized to him like five times because like you guys know how Matt and I are. Like we were on there together, and it was just like we covered just things that we shouldn't have covered on a digital marketing podcast type of thing. <laughs> it was like he was, I think Daryl, he said he had fun, but I, I imagine he was mortified. He'll probably <laughs> second guess every life decision he makes after asking us to join him on something like that. So hopefully some people find us funny and like us. Yeah, no, you and Matt should never publicly be on anything together. <laughs> no, we're, we're we're, we, yeah. we have meetings every uh, every Tuesday with Michael and Mark and Matt and, me, <laughs> and Simon. Poor Simon. <laughs> and oh, Matt, I just feel like I feel like I need to take a shower after those meetings. <laughs> All right, let's answer some questions here so people can go back to work. <laughs> Uh, Zay said, where can I view Google Patents? Uh, what is it? USPTO dot something? USPTO? Yeah, actually, Google's a really good resource for that. If you Google Google Patents, it's like the first result. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just, that's how I always find it. I don't even remember it. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, Google, yeah, Google has all its patents on yeah. patents.google.com. Boom. Oh, look, you can actually search the patents. Isn't that fun? What a cool thing. I always went to, is it USPTO? You went to the actual patent website? Yeah. 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 Well, that site's cool because it has, like, all the images and everything. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But you can do what you want. The the patents.google.com or USPTO.gov. Yeah. Uh, Anna said, "What about NAP?" Anna, you're gonna have to watch the replay. Basically, in like a like a a one uh, like a one paragraph sentence concise summation. One paragraph sentence. That's really nice. Uh, just like a one paragraph summations. Like NAP consistency just doesn't have nearly as nearly as much ranking clout as people would like you to believe. And coincidentally, those people sell citation cleanup services. So, boom. Don't uh, don't feed so much into it, but definitely jump back through. It's the very beginning of the webby. Um, I, I'd listen to it because we're just really smart people, and we said really smart things. I'm I'm kidding, <laughs> but it was good. I, I said do suggest checking it out. There's uh, you know, we're gonna do like a a, a more in depth test where I'm just gonna assault the NAP of a couple sites and see what happens. Um, uh. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit ambitious here and uh, tackle uh, Jeremy's question here. Uh, I'm a local profit breakthrough member. I have gone through the course in months past, but now do not have time to go through much training. I'm looking for concrete, systemizable, repeatable processes that work to rank higher competition local clients. Can you help me with that? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> build citations, build pillowing links, build high authority links in the form of PBNs or uh, manual outreach. Yeah. Um, That's my process. The, 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 I, I'd, say, I'd say just to build on that, um, you know, if you want the ultimate scalable, repeatable process, just 
white label. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> easiest way, and, definitely. And you can you can either hit up web20record.com or one of us. Boom. So, <laughs> self <so> plug. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate scalable. <laughs> like you he, guys think you need to work for your money? You've been lying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the, this webby has been great. I have an SEO site stuck on page two that I've not sent any PBNs to because I'm afraid to over optimize them. Well, I, I'd say, Brian, there's I, I can see one really good reason why you're stuck on page two. Send some <laughs> links, man. It, scared money does not make any money. That's that's what they say in, in certain rap songs. So I live by that, Brian. Send some links to that sucker. You'll get it up there, okay? Well, yeah, and you don't have to go extremely hard with the anchor text. You know, you could start off slow, do some URL, but, but yeah, you got to be sending links, or it's if you yeah. do nothing, it's not going to move. If you if you really want to be a, a scaredy cat, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but if you really want, and I do this, I, I'm I, I'm guilty of of having that same thought process on, in certain mm -hmm. situations. Um, try doing like a a brand. And then a keyword variation, right? So Love your this. brand would be like local, like local client takeover SEO training, right? So you're not just SEO training, SEO training, SEO training. You're getting the brand in there, you know, with the key, with the exact match modifier. So give it a give it a, a little trizies. And I mean, like start start light and slowly build up velocity and get more aggressive. Like that is. That's something I actually took away from Greg Morrison like a couple of years ago, and I've sort of been applying it to my business ever since. Is like, look natural. Like a business would, I mean, there are viral businesses, but it's not going to get tons of links immediately. But if you build links, you know, 10 days apart and then scale up to seven days apart and then, you know, five days apart, three days apart, only odd numbers, never do even numbers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, it's like dating a girl, right? You know, like don't whip out your oh. cock on the other stage. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my uh, god! <laughs> Just got okay. So we've been in here almost an hour, so that's your get loose time. We need to keep these to under fifty-two minutes because Jake yeah, been, been way been too spending too much time yeah. with uh, with Mark and Matt Stack. I think that's uh, rubbing off on me. Oh my! Wow. Um, no kidding. Um, what is, what is this? It's, a, it's a good analogy, though. <laughs> what is this new $17 a month service from the lazy English bloke? I can appreciate that that nomenclature there. Uh, we'll we'll drop something to something to the group, man. It's, it's just going to be a, a monitoring service. It's going to have uh, all your APIs to your top citations to maintain NAP consistency. It's a ton of services in one. And, you know, we just look around and see like all these overpriced cleanup services that just aren't, they're, they're not as impactful in your rankings to, to justify the, the costs. And you see these overpriced uh, dashboards and stuff for client retention. And, you know, we're just like, hey, let's, let's just offer something better and at like 50% of the price of even the cheapest thing in the industry. So bada boom, bada bing, as Uncle Vinny used to say. We'll let you know more about that. I think we're going to start baiting, uh, beta testing that next week. Uh, how to become a leader in the industry? Assassinate the other leaders. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you. And actually, don't, don't, don't assassinate anyone. <laughs> we live in a crazy world. It's like the guy from LCT told me <laughs> to, to destroy all of you. It's like no, that's actually terrible advice. Um, <laughs> you know, what? What? I, I mean, to be a leader in the in, in an industry, I feel like that's all going to be based on perception. You know, I was talking, unfortunately, it was with two, like, diehard Mac users. Like, they're just in love with Macs. And honestly, let's just be honest. If we look at the the lineup of Apple products in general, they have never really made anything innovative. Like, the whole iPod was, like, way late to the scene. The iPhone is was, like, the 50th freaking smartphone to the scene. What they did better than everyone else is their marketing, their customer experience, the on-packaging experience. I mean, that's what made them an industry leader. So <laughs> having, having said that, I, I'm not sure you – I don't know. Do you want to be – you don't need to become an uh, – I, I don't know. You don't need to become – an industry leader to be respected in an industry and be seen as authoritative. Yeah, you know what? Probably their most innovative product was the Newton, which 
they failed on marketing for and <laughs> missed price <laughs> and nobody's you know, heard. You know what they did really well is Apple Mac, so good for them. <laughs> 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 Yeah, what they did really well is the shit you guys never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was innovative. I didn't say they did it well. Um, no, but I mean, like, I, it depends. Like, it depends what you mean. Like, becoming a like, it's pretty easy to become a leader in in a small industry. Like, people just have to to see your face, see you, see you around. Like, they see you a bunch of times. I used to back when you could scrape your IDs on Facebook without getting your like, ad account banned. I'd, and I was cold calling. I'd find like the decision makers that I wanted to influence. I'd scrape their UIDs on Facebook, and I'd run ads to like one person for like two weeks before I cold called them. And the ads were just like my face, and just like it was like like CSEO expert Jacob Kettner in like this, you know, present this webinar or whatever. Like there wasn't even a webinar. It was bullshit. I just wanted my face to show up in front of this like person, and then I'd call them and be like, hey, it's Jacob Kettner, and they're like, oh, I've heard of you. I'm like, yes, you have, because I've been putting ads in front of your face. Uh, but there's, you know, like in, in small industries, like just get into, you know, like meet some some core, uh, you know, like what, like depending on what niche you're in. Like, say you're in, uh, I don't know, like you help, like asbestos removal people. Um, like find someone that's like big in in that industry. Like that those people go to, like their suppliers or that you know have new technology on how to remove asbestos and like you know I offer them something get an interview with them like like it's so easy to get interviews with people um, that that aren't actually real celebrities like if they're just like celebrities in their niche like no one's asking to interview them because <laughs> cause they're not like like people's pride gets and you know like uh, yeah like it's it's all their pride like you're like hey like I want to interview you and put you like a feature you on this Thing that I do, and then you get a picture of you with them, and you like, it's it's really easy to become a leader in in a small niche. Uh, yeah. Hope hope that was helpful. Well, also too, like you were saying too, it's not necessarily about being a complete leader in your your industry, but being a leader in your industry as far as the, the people who know you or see you. You mm -hmm. know, the way they identify you. It's a, not not everyone in the world has to know you as the leader in that industry. Just that every person that that sees you knows you as the leader in that industry, you know. Yeah, that's absolutely. all I had. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Uh, we have Anna. Do you recommend EasyBacklinks.com? No, stuff like that's usually going to have really just terrible results. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, and I don't mean I don't know that 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 specific service or tool or whatever that is, but you're, I, I couldn't recommend that, no. That that just seems really shitty. I just actually looked it up quick. Um, also, Anna was not impressed with your shenanigans. I'm sure no one was. Whip out what? Dude, I'm sorry, Anna. We can't take Jacob anywhere. That's terrible. I apologize for all the decent folk that were just destroyed. Their afternoon was destroyed by his shenanigans. Sorry, Anna. But no, I would not do easybacklinks.com because just like Jacob ruins your afternoon, that'll probably ruin your site. If I'm <laughs> um, yeah, actually, actually, I own that service. <laughs> oh, good God! Yeah, that's good. Oh my God! You just couldn't, you couldn't let it go, could you? you just had to get a punchline in. Famous the degree, I'm famous in my neighborhood. Congrats! It's, it's, you know, pick a, pick a micro niche or a specific thing and. Yeah. You know, lowest hanging fruit first. You know, one one rung of the ladder at a time. Uh, Matt is an industry leader. All you have to do is get a stable of donkeys and boom, instant donk celeb. Well, I now know who Dang Putnani is. So, what's up, Joe? <laughs> Gonna just assume that's Joe. Good to see you on here. Uh, Jesse said on your case study, you have schema set up with an address. Is this a real address? Is this a verified GMB? No, 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 and no. It's not a real address. It's a facetious address just to get to each getting an LPD. We never went forward with the GMB. Um, the whole thing of, and here's the thing, I, I think the entire like blended algo is becoming a bit more disjointed, or at least it seemed like it did in this last update. But having mm -hmm. said that, I always found that even if it was a more blended algo, the organic's always the first thing that's gonna pop in my in my experience. Like I, I and that's even without a GMB. Like I'll be able to get an organic ranking before a GMB in any type of SERP environment. 
So yeah, same. Yeah, um, I've had a couple. I think local rank first, but not yeah, like one. <laughs> I okay. Yeah, I have one that popped. That's like on like page bottom of page two for their main keyword and number one in maps. But it's the first yeah. time I've ever seen that. Exactly. Yeah. Hey Jeremy, I'll I'll hit you up like this evening or tomorrow, man. I'll I'll take a look and see if I can't give you a hand on something. Um, Ralph said, "What about the recent updates from Google? Any consensus on what they were about, other than the three-pack filters?" You know, I I saw a bunch of like like search engine Landon's journal and stuff posting like all you need to know about this specific update, and I, I just admittedly completely ignored them. Um, I, I like to keep an eye on the rank trackers and see what responded well compared to what strategy I was using. And again, a lot of my a lot of my biggest upsets were, and I didn't have many, admittedly. There wasn't a ton of like real big upsets, but it was more map related than than organic. So. Hmm. Stuff stuff is still fluctuating, I find, especially in maps. But I have some some clients that are that are bouncing between like number two or three in maps and number ten. Like, with you know, one day they're just gone, and I'm like, <laughs> crap, I gotta, you know, try to do some stuff. And before I even do the stuff, the next day they're back. Like it's, <laughs> I've just I've just been noticing. It's like it's not over. No, it's been bouncing a lot still. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, I have a client that is a whoops. Sorry. I have a client that is a kitchen remodeler. However, he works out of his house. He does not want his address out there. How can I get him ranking locally without exposing that actual address? Um, you you can just choose not to have the address public in the listing. Yeah. You know what? That I mean, you still have the problem though. You can. Like you can watch the, the address. Right. I mean, if you're building citations, like Google's the only property that gives you that option. Um, I don't know. You should explain to him that it looks really sketchy to not have an address. <laughs> and that he'll probably get a better conversion rate if he's transparent with his clients. Um, you could do a virtual address as well. Yeah. That's why I would recommend getting a virtual address if it's a, a client. Awesome. Yeah, that can work fine. You just make up a fake address and tell people not to go there. Because it's a fake address. You put a little note right on the site. Don't go. Fake address. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. But, you know, like, at, at a point, like I have clients that are like, oh, like I want you to... <laughs> I just took on a new client this week, and he's like, he's like, well, I'm not allowed... He's a franchise, and I sort of feel for him, but he's like, I can't... We're not allowed to build our own Facebook page or Twitter profile or... Uh, YouTube account, <laughs> but I need you to rank me, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like, like I, you know, like all all the guarantees that I laid out are are out the window right now. <laughs> like, well, you know, I will do my best, but I have never done this before. Like, uh, you know, not I, I'm quite confident that I can do it anyway. But I mean, those are <laughs> yeah, there's a point where clients are gonna want stuff that just can't be done, and mm -hmm. like sometimes you just gotta tell them, well, like if you want to rank, you need to have an address. <laughs> awesome. Alright guys, that should about have answered all the questions. If we missed you, drop it in the thread. Uh, if you have any additional that we don't have time to get to, drop it there. We'll be happy to help and we will see you guys next week. And before we go, just know you've been lied to. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Awesome, guys. Thanks a lot for coming. Hopefully you had a, a phenomenal time. Yep. Opened your eyes to some of the misconceptions in the industry. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.